Charlie's war. The pain was blinding, all-encompassing, and had dragged him screaming back to consciousness. Where was he? The pain made it hard to concentrate. Trooper David Charlie Charlesworth lay there, confused and dazed, and the pain slowly became more manageable. He began to focus where it was coming from, down his left side. He couldn't move his head, he just lay there. Not an encouraging sight to see, a row of ancient gravestones and a soldier's feet lying next to him. It started coming back to him. They had been sat down in the mess room eating their lunch, when suddenly they were given the order to get their guns from the armory. This is not a drill, they had been told. No soldier expected to be called to a real alien attack action at HQ. He was excited, as it was his first deployment since being seconded to unit from the regular army. Aliens! He was going to meet real aliens! His dad had been a huge fan of the sci-fi B-movies, and would have been astounded if he knew that his son was going to be fighting an actual alien menace. Sadly, it was nowhere near as glamorous as he'd expected. He had arrived outside to find smoke and confusion where a couple of his company laid on the floor next to their mortar. He didn't know if they were unconscious or dead, but he had no chance to investigate, as up ahead, through the acrid black smoke, were screams from more of the troops. He felt fear rise within him, but managed to quash it enough to move forward. As the smoke cleared, he saw in front of him some amorphous thing. Vaguely man-shaped, but seemingly composed of angry red boils. It had one large, ugly-looking eye where the head would be, and it turned and looked straight at him. Then the boils down its left side began to detach themselves into a clawed limb and pointed at him. He froze, scared. By the time he had raised his gun, aiming for the bubbling mass, before he could squeeze the trigger, there was a livid flash from the creature's arm, and he felt a searing pain in his side. Then blackness claimed him. He awoke disorientated. Where was he? The pain in his side screamed into his thoughts, reminding him of the thing that had blasted him. He couldn't hear any sound, so the battle was over. Either they had lost, or it had moved on to somewhere else. The pain screamed again, and he lost consciousness. He woke again with an aching, dull throb. He tried to move, but it brought a sharp stabbing pain and with it waves of nausea making him feel sick. He looked over at the feet. Was that Jimbo? He called to him in what came out as a dry croak. He tried again, louder. No answer. It looked like Jimbo was dead, and he wouldn't be far behind. He let out a self-pitying moan, but he was damned if he was going to cry. Another sharp wave of pain washed over him, but it soon passed back into the aching, dull thud, which he realised was in time to his heartbeat. He had never been afraid of death. He didn't believe in hell, no matter what the various vicars and parsons had tried to tell him. Just the method of his death. He didn't fear a quick death, just the long, lingering kind. His thoughts turned to his mum. She would be devastated, of course. She hadn't wanted him to join up, as her dad had been in the war. She worried constantly about him, especially when he'd been posted to Dublin. But he'd written to her regularly, as well as sending silly postcards from wherever he'd been stationed. He wondered what they'd tell her. Not that he'd been killed by an alien jelly, that was for certain. He found that thought absurd, and normally would have laughed at the ridiculousness of the situation. Would they give him a hero's death, even though he had frozen? More likely a KIA note. He realised it actually mattered more to him than anything else at this moment. He wanted his mum to be proud of him. And now he felt guilty he'd lied to her in his last leave said he couldn't get over to see her, when in reality he hadn't wanted to. He'd just wanted to go out on a bender with the lads. His poor mum. 
Charlie tried again to move. Again there was the crushing wave of nausea, but he managed to roll onto his back. His body went into a series of uncontrollable spasms that gradually settled. From this position, all he could see was the brilliant blue of the bright summer sky. He steeled himself and tried to pop himself up on his elbow, but settled for raising his head forward onto his chest. He saw the Land Rovers in the car park, but no movement of any kind. Had HQ been overrun? Were there any survivors? He managed to move his head a little and could see that there were no other bodies in view, just Jimbo, Bill and Pete by their mortar. Charlie realised he could now see the damage the creature's blast had done. His uniform was charred black in a ragged circular shape, and through that he could see a hole into his body. Surprisingly little blood though. Shock hit him and he started shivering uncontrollably. He let his head fall back to the floor with a dull thud, another wave of nausea washing over him. Even though it was a hot day, goosebumps erupted all over his body. Charlie couldn't stop shivering, and he was cold on a hot day. His sight was getting blurry. This was it, he thought, feeling strangely detached from the whole situation. He'd given up. Blackness began to encroach at the edges of his sight, slowly filling his vision, and a strange floating feeling took hold of him the world spinning round him. He breathed out, long and slow, more like a deep sigh. Over here, lads! The voice came from a million miles away, barely registering in Charlie's mind. Charlie's still with us! He felt the world shift, his view rocked around him. He felt nothing, could make no sense of the random images he had. Familiar faces appearing and disappearing, etched with concern the one thought that was filling his mind. I want to live. I am going to live. The last thing he remembered was seeing the tarpaulin covering as he was bundled into the back of a Land Rover. <laughs>